go into the world. And tell every man that you meet, there is a man on the cross. A Catholic take. What you need to know right now. A bold synthesis of inspiration and information. Keeping you up to date on the news and issues from a courageous Catholic perspective. A Catholic Take with Joe McLean starts now. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take. Bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and it's good to be on with you. Praise be to God. It just dropped. It just dropped just this morning. Uh, there was a brand new document out by the Vatican, uh, the Castry, uh, for... Christian unity, and it's called uh, the Bishop of Rome. What does it mean? It's calling for four changes proposed in a study document. And we're going to be talking about what these four changes are and the implications. Some are saying it's kind of like windswept house. It has the, the air of windswept house. Maybe it was prophecy back in the day. Who knows? But there are four changes in this document. Dr. Anthony Stein from Return to Tradition is going to be on at 30 past the hour to share what this document entails. It's quite lengthy. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, your typical and what I would call gobbledygook type of language in it. But nonetheless, we're going to distill this. Plus, I'll put links in the show notes for you today about this new document, the Bishop of Rome dropping today, seemingly bringing down the supremacy of the chair of St. Peter, especially in the eyes of Protestants, not just the Eastern Orthodox, but the Protestants too. All of that with Dr. Anthony Stein from Return to Tradition at 30 past the hour. But we are in the midst of our spring appeal, trying to wrap up the need for our apostolate to continue to do what it does. So we we do need your financial contribution today. And uh, I know we're, we're trying to raise about another $43,000. So if you can help chip away at that, any gift, any size, it would mean the world to us at 877-711-8500, 877-711-8500. Would you be my first caller this hour? I would love to have you. 877-711-8500. We will post the show notes to everything we discussed today over at thestationofthecross.com forward slash A-C-T. Let's pray. Let's get into it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and now your saint of the day. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. Anthony was born Ferdinand in the year of our Lord 1195 to a noble family in Lisbon, Portugal. At a young age, he entered the Augustinians and was ordained a priest, but ten years later he left to become a Franciscan, hoping to die a martyr's death by preaching to the Saracens. He took the name Anthony in honor of St. Anthony the Abbot, patron of the chapel in which the younger Anthony took his vows, and eventually he ended up in Italy, Anthony was quiet and humble, but one day he was prevailed upon to preach, and he stunned all present with his wisdom and eloquence. He went on to earn the title Hammer of the Heretics for his preaching against error. Anthony also worked many miracles. He purified poisoned food with a simple sign of the cross, caused a hungry donkey to ignore fresh oats and kneel before the true presence instead, bilocated so he could preach and sing the office at the same time, and famously preached a sermon to the fishes near Padua. Considered a saint during his own lifetime, Anthony died at just 36 years of age, in the year of our Lord 1231, and was canonized the very next year. At the exhumation of the body about 30 years later, St. Bonaventure found Anthony's tongue perfectly preserved, as if still ready to preach another mighty sermon. Among many other patronages, Anthony is best known for helping to find lost items, having helped recover one of his own relics sometime after his death. He was proclaimed a doctor of the church by Pope Pius XII. For more about this day and others in the Church's calendar, visit thestationofthecross.com slash saintsandseasons. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. And now your headline news. The Hill reports 
Hezbollah fires hundreds of rockets after Israel takes out senior commander. Hezbollah fired hundreds of rockets at Israel overnight into yesterday morning after an Israel Defense Forces strike on a senior Hezbollah commander. Many Israelis in northern Israel were forced to take shelter. The IDF said in a statement that Hezbollah Command and Control Center in South Lebanon, which was used to direct terror attacks against the Israeli territory in recent months, was struck by the IAF. As part of the strike, Sami Talib Abdullah, the commander of the Nasser unit in the Hezbollah terrorist organization, was eliminated. Sami Talib Abdullah was one of Hezbollah's most senior commanders in southern Lebanon. He and three others were killed in the strike. The Hill reports several people with alleged Islamic State ties arrested on immigration violation. Eight people in the United States with suspected ties to the Islamic State have been detained. The arrest took place in New York, Philadelphia, and Los Angeles, and the individuals entered the country through the southern border. The individuals were from Tajikistan and passed through the U.S. government's screening process after entering the country last spring. The individuals were being tracked by the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement was working with the task force and made the arrest and is now working to remove them from the country. LifeSite News is reporting former U.S. SSPX District Superior sentenced to one year in prison for molesting multiple underage boys. A French criminal court has sentenced Father Rostan, 58 years old, to 12 months in prison after the former U.S. SSPX District Superior admitted to molesting seven underage boys in Europe between 2002 and 2018. Rostan served as the SSPX's U.S. District Superior from August 2008 until 2014, per the request of then-Superior General Bishop Bernard Ferlay. In court, Father Rostan said that he informed the SSPX via a letter in 1998 that he had an attraction to children. He stated that he informed the SSPX about this again in 2000, then in 2006, and in 2013. Those those are your headline news. The gospel today comes to us from Matthew chapter 5, verses 20 through 26. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, You shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, You fool! will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Ignatius Catholic Study Bible says, sometimes called the sixth antithesis, Jesus acts with divine authority to perfect and deepen the moral codes of the Mosaic law. Each antithesis follows a similar format. Jesus cites the old law, saying, You have heard that it was said, and responds with the refrain, But I say to you. The pattern underscores Jesus' authority as a new Moses and the lawgiver of the new covenant. But I would take that up even a notch further. He's not just a new Moses. As Moses would say, and be a prophet of a future time when the Messiah would come from among the people, he would be, as Moses says, one greater than even he. So if Moses walks through water, one greater than he would walk on top of water. Amen? And as Moses was given the law to give to the people, this one greater than him would be the source 
of the law. He would be God himself. He would be, in fact, divine. St. Chrysostom would say, by righteousness is here meant universal virtue, but observe the superior power of grace in that he requires of his disciples who were yet uninstructed to be better than those who were masters under the Old Testament. Thus, he does not call the scribes and Pharisees unrighteous, but speaks of their righteousness. Close quote, St. Chrysostom. St. Augustine would say, otherwise, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, that is, exceed that of those who break what themselves teach, as it is elsewhere said of them, they say and do not, see, for instance, Matthew chapter 23, just as if he had said, unless your righteousness exceed in this way, that ye do what ye teach, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. St. Augustine is trying to make clear, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. You got to do both. It's not either or. It's you got to do both. You got to live the life. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. But is this why we have sacramental grace? So we can make frequent visits to the confession, confess our sins in the tribunal, receive the grace, hear the words of the Lord and Savior, using the person uh, they are sitting in that box with you, the priest, as James tells us, to confess our sins to one another, because the prayer of a, a righteous man availeth much. And therefore, God, in his mercy to us, allows us to hear the words, I absolve you. And you can have confidence in that. Praise be to God. So go to confession frequently, walk the walk, and talk the talk. It's both and, not either or. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. It is great to be on with you. We are in the middle of our spring appeal trying to raise the needed funds to continue to operate. We only have about $43,000 left to raise, and as soon as we get it, we go right back to regular programming. And you can make a gift and help us chip away at that. Any gift, any size, whatever you can do, please be on the team at 877-711-8500. That phone number is 877-711-8500. But coming up at 30 past the hour, brand new document has just dropped. The Bishop of Rome it's uh, it's a very interesting document. It is calling for four changes. It's a study document, so it's the first first chain in a or link in a, ch- a chain that's about to hit. And uh, we're going to have Dr. Anthony Stein from Return to Tradition on the team. He has covered this on his channel this morning. He's going to be on with us at thirty past the hour to find uh, just exactly what is in this document and what are they calling for and what are the impl- impl- the implications of that. And, of course, um, it seems interesting because it's more than just the Eastern Orthodox. It's the Protestants, too. We'll talk about that at 30 past the hour. But uh, we are trying to raise those funds, and we do need your help today. I have something I want to play for you in a moment, but there's some people I want to thank. Leslie from Rochester, New York, is on the team. $25. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful programming, Leslie said. Thank you. And Eugene from Kenmore, New York. Thank you. Eugene, you're amazing. $100. That helps us a lot. Praise be to God. Another $4,900 still to go in this hour. You can help us with any gift, any size at 1-877-711-8500 is that phone number. 877-711-8500. Could I tempt you a bit, though? Would you consider a dollar per day gift? That is the backbone and foundation of our donor base it really helps us uh, to really cover the costs of our apostolate, which are, let's just say, adding up quite a bit. I mean, inflation is Im- impacting your home just as much as it's impacting ours, and we do need your help. So as Mother Angelica used to lovingly say, keep us between the gas bill and the electric bill. And I suppose if you're in the, uh, if the, in the northeast of our country, you probably do have a gas bill. Those of us down south, probably not so much. But whatever you do have in your utility line up there, keep us somewhere in the middle there. We would be grateful to you. 877-711-8500. But any gift, any size, maybe you've never given before. Would you consider like even a first-time gift? $5, $10, $20. Just imagine if 200 people called in a $5 gift. You see how that would add up very quickly? It would. It would mean a lot to us. 
at 877-711-8500. Whatever you can do, please call right now, 877-711-8500. Or you could also donate on our website as well. Uh, we uh, we have a wonderful opportunity for you. Uh, everyone gets a gift at 877-711-8500 or at the station of the cross.com. Smash that donate button at the top of the page there in that red bar or on our mobile app, the iCatholic radio and the iCatholic music mobile app. You can both donate online and on the, mo- on the mobile app there as well. Very easy, fast and secure. And it would mean the world to us. If you could help us chip away at this last $43,000 that we need to cover all of our expenses for this apostolate this spring, eight, seven, 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 11, eight, five, zero, zero, eight, seven, 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 one, one, eighty, five hundred. It is the month of the sacred heart of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I am proud to be on the team of the sacred heart in a month where so many are celebrating pride. I am proud to be on the team of the most sacred heart. Are you? I'd love to know that. You can let me know that in the com box or one of our video feeds or by calling and letting us know at 877-711-8500. Phone lines are open to you at 877-711-8500. But I want to play for you a poem that uh, my daughter, who, by the way, just yesterday received a National Writers Award, a uh, Scholastic Writing Award, and she was uh, like one of 300 thousand people who entered and she won an award. I'm very proud of her, but she narrated this poem from St. Therese of Lisieux on the Sacred Heart. And I want to play this in honor of the month of the Sacred Heart, because we are proud to be on the team of the Sacred Heart. And we need to show that and share that with others. But I do need to hear from you this hour to chip away at our financial goals. And uh, we have a lot to raise. $4,000 this hour, 877 711 Zero, zero. Please call now, 877-711-8500. Listen to this. To the Sacred Heart, a poem by St. Therese of Lisieux, read by Mary McLean. Beside the tomb wept Magdalene at dawn. She sought to find the dead and buried Christ. Nothing could fill the void now he was gone. No one to soothe her burning grief sufficed. Not even you, archangels, heaven assigned, to her could bring content that dreary day. Your buried king alone she longed to find and bear his lifeless body far away. Beside his tomb she there the last remained, and there again was she before the dawn, there too to come to her the Savior deemed. He would not be by her in love outdone. Gently, he showed her then his blessed face, and one word sprang from his deep heart's recess. Mary, his voice she knew, she knew its grace. It came with perfect peace her heart to bless. One day, my God, I too, like Magdalene, desire to find thee, to draw near to thee, so... Over earth's immense, wide-stretching plain, I sought its master and its king to see. Then cried I, though I saw the flowers bloom in beauty neath green trees and azure skies, O brilliant nature, thou art one vast tomb, unless God's face shall greet my longing eyes. A heart I need to soothe me and to bless, a strong support that cannot pass away, to love me wholly, and my feebleness, and never leave me through the night or day. There is not one created thing below can love me truly and can never die. God became man, none else my needs can know. He, he alone can understand my cry. Thou comprehendest all I need, dear Lord. To win my heart from heaven thou didst come. For me thy blood didst shed, O King adored and on our altars makest thy home. So, if I may not here behold thy face, or catch the heavenly music of thy voice, I still can live each moment by thy grace, and in thy sacred heart I can rejoice. O heart of Jesus, wealth of tenderness, my joy thou art, in thee I safely hide. Thou, who my earliest youth didst charm and bless, my last evening, O oh, with me abide. All that I had 
to thee I wholly gave, to thee each deep desire of mine is known. Whoso his life shall lose, that life shall save. Let mine be ever lost in thine alone. I know it well, no righteousness of mine hath any value in thy searching eyes, as every breath my heart must draw from thine, to make of worth my life's long sacrifice. Thou hast not found thine angels without taint. Thy law amid the thunderbolts was given, and yet, my Jesus, I nor fear nor faint. For me on Calvary thy heart was riven. To see thee in thy glory face to face, I know it well, the soul must pass through fires. Choose I on earth in my purgatorial place, to flaming love of thy great heart's desires. So shall my exiled soul to death's command make answer with one cry of perfect love, then flying straight to heaven, its fatherland shall reach with no delay that home above. Isn't that good? Praise be to God. She did such a good job. I'm so proud of her. Praise be to Jesus. So uh, congratulations to my daughter today who uh, just won a national award. Very proud of her. But that's a beautiful poem. And we're going to put a link to it in the show notes if you'd like to share that and be proud to be on the team of the most sacred heart in this month of the sacred heart. And we need to be uh, sharing that as far and as wide as possible today. Praise be to God. Not just the poem, but the sacred heart of Jesus in particular. David! From North Clemsford, Massachusetts, is on the team today. Good morning to you. Thank you for your time today, and thank you for uh, your donation. 877-711-8500 is the phone number, 877-711-8500. Uh, we're going to be going to a break here in just a few minutes. We come back. We have Dr. Anthony Stein from Return to Tradition on the team. A brand-new document has dropped this morning out of the Vatican on the Bishop of Rome, seemingly bringing down the supremacy of uh, of the pontificate of the seat because you know times are different now so we just changed with the times apparently we're going to get dr stein's take on this brand new document coming up but we do need your help to chip away at our goal four thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars still this hour to go eight seven 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 eleven eighty five hundred is that phone number eight seven 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 one one 8500 is the phone number. Please give us a call. Chip in. Help us with uh, with uh, getting this money together because, honestly, we can't do it without you. You know, you know, people that do this day in and day out, it's impossible to do without the financial contributions of viewers and listeners just like you. We don't get checks from your diocese. We don't get checks from the USCCB. Uh, we don't get checks from even their, uh, their the CCHD. Like they give all kinds of money to crazy organizations that support even satanic rituals. Uh, we've covered that quite a bit extensively, actually. But nonetheless, we're not going to get a check from them. We're not going to get a check from the Vatican. As much as I would love to call up and say, hey, send us some of Peter Spence, it'll never, ever happen. So the only way we can do what we do is because you financially contribute to the cause. And we're asking you to do that this morning at 877-711-8500. 877-711-8500 is the phone number to call and be a part of our our, uh, our team here this morning. Praise be to God. All right, you can also donate online. And, and I think Bridget said that she was having trouble getting through this morning. If you're having trouble, consider donating online. Thestationofthecross.com. You can just smash the donate button at the top of the page there. Super simple, very easy. Bridget, I'm sorry you were having trouble getting in, uh, but go to the website or uh, donate on the mobile app, the iCatholic Radio or the iCatholic Music mobile app as well. And can I just give some shout outs here on our uh, private group on Telegram for the uh, Catholic Take program this morning? Love to see the insiders on the team this morning. Damon, good morning to you. Mateus, Anna, Sharon, Becky Hansen, good morning to you. Praise be to God. Glad to see you guys here. Sharon, I hope you're feeling better today. Karen, Andy Bashaw, good morning to you. Mike Kay, our friend, the brick wall. Good morning to you. Thanks for being on the team today. I love seeing everybody hanging out and chatting with us. It's a big part of what we do here. And it's a community that's growing, and we couldn't be more grateful to you. So your generous financial contribution towards our goals is very, very appreciated. 877-711-8500. We're going to a break here in a moment, but I'm looking for that next phone call to drop at 877 711 8,500. And trust me when I tell you, I, we can appreciate how hard you work for your income. 
We know exactly what you're going through because uh, the grocery bill is just getting bigger at my house. I don't know about you, but it is not inexpensive. It is very expensive. Inflation is a problem and it's getting worse. So help us by staying not just alive, but actually thriving for the glory of God and for the salvation of souls. We are doing things that are interesting and unique in the Catholic radio world, and we need your financial contribution to continue to do that. Not many people cover the kinds of stories that we do, have the kinds of conversations that we have, and we're doing that day in and day out, not only on A Catholic Take, but The Simple Truth, Mother Miriam, Father Mateg, the Ask a Priest Live program, and more. But we need your financial contribution. Any gift, any size, consider $50, $10, whatever you can do. 877-711-8500. That phone number is 877-711-8500. We'll be right back. Dr. Anthony Stein is coming up next. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and it's great to be on with you. Praise be to God. Can I just give a couple of quick shout outs? I'm so grateful to WM and to Think and Repent. Thank you for your generous contributions and support for what we do. 877-711-8500. Dr. Anthony Stein, just this morning on his YouTube channel, is covering a brand new document that has dropped out of the dicastery for promoting Christian unity called the Bishop of Rome. And he joins us now to talk about that. Dr. Stein, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. And um, I was expecting a document that was, I was hoping it would be relatively short so we could just do a full read through. It's <laughs> uh, it's book length. It's about 135 pages long. And the best part about it is it's the proposal document for further dialogue and discussion, a document born out of dialogue with the World Council of Churches, which should raise alarm bells for people Yikes. because... Before Vatican II, the World Council of Churches was formally condemned by the church. And then after Vatican II, suddenly we had like a, we weren't part of it, but we had conversations in the spirit with them in the name of ecumenical dialogue. And this document, what it does is enthrones ecumenical dialogue and synodality and questions the our current understanding of papal infallibility and papal primacy and says we need to re-examine those those definitions while keeping somehow to those definitions, because you can't just come out and say you reject infallible declarations of the faith, but you need to re-examine them in light of the conditions of the 21st century and in light of synodality. They, they, they talk about, they talk about the JP two document from the nineties, uh, ut unum sent, I think it was. And uh, it seems mm-hmm. to me that JP two is really more focused on the East, but it seems that Francis maybe even more focused on the Protestant churches more than anything. Is that fair to say? Uh, it seems that way. I mean, the document explicitly says, you know, working with the East. And as I said this morning, if it was to continue efforts of reconciliation with the Eastern Orthodox, this wouldn't be anything w- worth critiquing. Because if there is to be ecumenical dialogue with anybody, it should be with the apostolic churches that have valid sacraments and agree with us on about 98% of thing, matters of doctrine and dogma. The disagreements on dogma with the East typically have to do with the, the more recently defined Marian dogmas and has to do with papal primacy and from Vatican I. But you, on most things, they agree with us. And that's where this ecumenical dialogue really should be for, for being serious. But remember, they're, they're having a press conference. It's probably over by now. But the announcement of this document had a press conference that included uh, an Armenian Orthodox bishop, which is fine, but also someone from the Anglican Church. Oh, wow. And it also, they also have had in the Synod of Synodality, representatives from Protestant groups are sitting there at the table discussing these things with bishops and with the Pope on equal footing with them. And so that's clearly who they're, t- they're talking about incorporating them there, too. And they use this weird term that they pull out of the John Paul II document called the hierarchy of truths, which sounds extraordinarily relativistic to me, especially in the context of how they're presenting it today. When they talk about the, um, you know, re- re-examining these dogmas, re-examining the concept of papal primacy and using synodality as its guide. Then you start having this hierarchy of truth, and it all starts to sound a little bit like some sort of dogmatic and moral relativism. 
Hmm. And uh, it's definitely concerning. And this isn't even the final document. Again, this is this is a document that's, you know, questions arise from these dialogue sessions that they were going to have to work with. This is not the last we're going to see of this. But this is a, my, clearly an attempt to, one of the things in the document is to say, synod of synodality should be basically going on forever. We should always have oh, wow. more synodality and more of this stuff going on at all times. Uh, talk, and talking about bringing, you know, synodal discussions to your local level, having it happen all the time. We're already sick of the word synodality. We're all Yikes. sick of that already. And yeah, it's it's the permanent aggiornamento on the steroids, basically. Michael Haynes this morning in his document that uh, sort of summarizes the, the Bishop of Rome doc, uh, we're going to link to that as well. He he makes a comparison to windswept house here. He says the text bears a peculiar resemblance to Malachi Martin's windswept house in which the globalist and Masonic aligned cardinals are attempting to force the Slavic Pope to resign through using the argument for him to do so would help the damaged unity of the church and improve the relations between the heterodox bishops and the Pope. One of the thoughts that came to my mind, and I'd love to get your take on this, would be, you know, we hear a lot about unity. Unity. Oh, we have to have unity. One bread, one loaf. That's what St. Paul talked about. We should all just do away with our divisions and our disagreements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, I asked the question, if we're doing away with truth, for the cost uh, for unity, isn't unity therefore cheap and shallow? I mean, we can't get rid of truth. Truth is a person. It seems this document, although not saying that explicitly, isn't that the natural uh, outcome of what they're suggesting? Essentially, that's what I, I said the same thing this morning in my live stream, that you cannot have unity. You can't sacrifice truth for unity. Because we're supposed to have unity in faith. But if we can't even agree on what the Eucharist is, if we can't even agree on the role of the Pope, on what the communion of saints is, if we can't agree on basic elements of the faith, then what unity is there? Is it just kumbaya and hand-holding? I mean, sure, standing... I, I, I am sympathetic to calls for Christians to set aside our squabbles in the face of rising evil from globalists and their free Masonic ideals. I'm totally sympathetic with that. You know, I mean, the pro-life movement's the exact perfect example of Christians of various stripes working together to achieve a common goal that is much needed. In the same way that one could argue in the political sphere going on in these elections, Christians should maybe consider being on the same side of things for once and put aside our petty differences. I get that argument. What I don't get is the idea that we can pretend that there aren't extraordinary differences of theology between us right now. we Again, we can't agree even on what the Eucharist is. We yeah. can't agree on who should receive the sacraments and who should not. We can't even agree in the Catholic Church right now about what constitutes a sin that you have to go to confession for, or that if certain sins can just be absolved by the priest in the, the confessional, even if the penitent doesn't really have a firm purpose of amendment. We can't even agree on the idea of public unrepentant sinners being excommunicated. Well, how are we going to have any kind of agreement, any kind of unity with people who don't share, frankly, the faith? Because they, they don't. Those are different religions. They are religions that have much in common with us, the profession of Christ being central to it in the Trinitarian view of things. But you can't have a unity without truth. Otherwise, it's just, what are you doing? So one of the other things that Michael points out was they're really wanting to redefine or reinterpret Vatican I here, which, you know, went a long way to defining the, the, with the role of the Pope in his. Uh... At any rate, it seems like they want to cast that out specifically for the times that they are changing. Right. Like, so we change with the times. The times are different today. So we got to get with it, man. We got to get with it. It seems so bizarre to me because all I can think of is is uh, St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. The Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And yet we have a hierarchy that seems to want to change as the wind blows, so do they. Is that Was that your take on it as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. That That's bizarre. The primacy of the Pope and papal infallibility needs to be surrendered or reexamined under the guise of the new conditions of the 21st century, which sounds suspiciously like some of the things that you that you read about that were said at the early days of Vatican II. 
that the church must make itself relevant to the modern world. It's more of that kind of stuff, except now with this synodality, which is decentralization. They explicitly say in those in the final chapters of that document that the that the laity have to be brought into synodal discussions on doctrine. It explicitly says that in there. And as I like to remind people, the present generation of Catholics are the worst catechized in history. Worse than the previous generation of Catholics who were themselves the worst catechized in history. What could possibly go wrong by letting people who barely understand the faith make doctrinal and dogmatic decisions? Yeah, a lot, probably. Um, So there's a lot of talk. You've already mentioned synodality. And one of the things that comes to mind when I think of how much they want the synodality process is just who gets to decide who gets to have an input, right? Like all this talk making us feel and think like, oh, we're going to have a say. We're going to have some input into this. We're going to we're going to be able to uh, help form, you know, what happens in the church next. But that's not true, is it? I don't get to have a say. There is a select group of people who get to have a say, and I'm not on that list. You're not on that list. Nobody listening to us right now is on that list. They get to choose that voice. Therefore, Mm -hmm. it feels a bit rigged, even if it does sound nice on paper. It is uh, the synodal process seems to be as safe and secure as the 2020 election was. (laughs) (laughs) Hand-picked people brought into the process. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Uh, And then, of course, as you also mentioned, the other change they're wanting to do is just have way more dialogue, way more meetings with uh, with all of these with these uh, Protestant churches. That's the other thing, too. They're not actually churches. They're uh, communities, but they're they're schiz. They're they've 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 left the church. They're schismatic. Are they not these Protestant communions? So why are we considering them as equals all of a sudden? Why have we forgotten what the church has been teaching all of these decades and centuries and now just sort of, you know, hey, we're, we're just moving on. We're letting go and, and moving on. I remember reading once that uh, it, it completely confounded a lot of Orthodox observers who do sympathize with our desire for unity, that we spend so much time dialoguing with Protestants whom they don't even consider Christians. <laughs> like It just completely blows their mind. And Frankly, the attitude towards Protestants by the Catholic Church cha- uh, used to be very similar to that of the Orthodox. That it changed in the 19th century, it began to change that way. But yeah, it's for some reason people who often, oftentimes, you've encountered Protestants, I'm sure, who deny the Trinity. Sure. Who see them who say that Mary was not the mother of God, and they were thus attacking the 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 head of Christ Himself when they do that. I don't understand this desire for this now. Granted, mostly I'm citing American Protestants who seem to be completely a different breed of Protestant than than their European counterparts. But it has been the project of the church since the council to find to to make it acquiesce to Protestant concerns as much as possible. And I think you saw that with that Lutheran uh, justification document in the yeah. 1990s, which got a lot of criticism for traditional from traditionalists in those days. So mm. I I don't understand this desire really with uh, people who are frankly of another religion. I mean, it's almost entirely another religion at this point, especially among the American Protestants. Um, but that is what they're focused on. While also mentioning working with the East and things. But again, no mention, at least in what I've read of the document, about the one thing that destroyed ecumenical dialogue with the East anyway, and that was fiducia supplicants. Yes. The number of times the, the Eastern Orthodox patriarchs came out and said, yeah, discussions with Rome are dead on arrival until this document is rescinded. Because they think that we're now all heretics for wanting to to bless gay, gay couples and things. And the document does explicitly say couple and their relationship, by the way, for those who don't think it does. It explicitly says that. And so ecumenical dialogue with the East was destroyed by Cardinal Fernandez. So, again, I don't know what the point of this is, this document is. Yeah. Other than there's, to— This is going to do away with the with the universal church and the, the supremacy and the power of— of the chair of St. Peter to, to bind and to loose and to encourage his brethren. It even says in the document, quote, the Roman primacy should be understood not so much as a universal power in a universal church, Ecclesia Universalis, but as an authority in service to the communion between the churches, that is to the whole church. That is to say, once the language is stripped away, the papacy should not seek to exercise its divine authority. Yikes. Can anybody say yikes? So, just uh, they're just he's just one of many. There's just one of many. And clearly, as of today, 
the one of many, do not agree on fundamental truth. And that truth is a person. And again, as we said a little while ago, I don't think you can get I don't think you can give up truth for the sake of unity. That's a cheap unity and nobody ought to want that. And I don't believe anybody will, to be honest with you. I'm not convinced that they'll come flocking in and be a part of the one body of Christ and pulling out the tambourines and singing Kumbaya just because this document or the Pope himself decides to uh, take off the tiara. At any rate, we're out of time. Dr. Anthony Stein, so grateful you jumped on this morning to give us your take on the document. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And everybody, please donate to the, to, to the, to the channel. Keep it going. You're amazing. God bless you. We're going to link to returntotradition.org. Check out his site. If you don't already know about it, I would encourage you to do so. We come back. I've got a follow-up for you. I've got people to thank and so grateful for you and your support. 877-711-8500. Please call right now. Be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. It's good to be on with you. Praise be to God. We have some people to thank. Oh, man. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you. Just thank you so much for your generous support to us. We we do appreciate you. 877-711-8500. 877-711-8500. Please help us chip away at the last remaining portion of our spring appeal to raise the funds we need to continue to operate. Teresa. <laughs> Wow, Teresa. Malden, Massachusetts, $2,000. Teresa, you're amazing. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. That took a dent. Praise be to Jesus. Anonymous in McKinney, Texas is on the team. Oh, wow. McKinney, Texas, $300. Anonymous, you're awesome. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you so much for that. Jane in Norton, Massachusetts, $50 one time. Pray for mom and husband. Jane, we are praying and couldn't be more grateful to you. From Norton, Massachusetts. Cheryl in Buffalo, New York, also $50. Glory be to God, Cheryl. Thank you so much. And Regina in Tonawanda, New York, uh, $50 one time. Thank you. Thank you. Pray for Al Cresta's health. Regina, thank you for actually bringing that up. I appreciate that. Al Cresta, if you don't know Al Cresta, and there's a good chance you might not, but Al Cresta is, he's a guy who's been a part of Catholic radio now for decades, for a very long time. He is a man who was a convert to the church. He was a Protestant pastor at one time, and he has been behind Ave Maria Radio for, for since the beginning, really. And um, I've had that wonderful opportunity of meeting out on a number of occasions, and he's just a wonderful man. He's been an, an incredible, incredible witness in the Catholic faith and in Catholic radio in general. Pray for him. He's got cancer. I think his days are coming to coming to a close. Help him by praying for him to prepare well for his day of judgment, standing before the Lord. And uh, we'd be grateful to you. Praise be to Jesus. Let's pray for Al Cresta and all those, especially who are suffering today uh, in any way, shape, or form. We would be grateful to you for that. 877-711-8500. 877-711-8500. Bridget! <laughs> In Hollywood, Florida is on the team at $50. Glory be to God. Thank you, Bridget. Pray for her family. Bridget, uh, isn't Hollywood also like being slammed with storms and flooding right now? I don't even know where that's at, but I saw some stuff are being reported, and it didn't look good. It looked like uh, that section. I thought it was Hollywood, Florida. Sarasota? I got to get out of the map and just may refresh my geography. I'm not sure how good you are in geography, but I got to remind myself uh, exactly uh, where things are. I, I thought Hollywood was in that. If so, I'll be praying for you and for everyone who is suffering through flooding. I know what that's like. Uh, I lived through Hurricane Harvey. My family and I were evacuated by boat. And uh, it can be a very stressful, kind of a crazy situation. Almost otherworldly, let's just say. 877-711-8500 is that phone number to call. We are down to the last 10 minutes on the clock and we would love, love, love to have your participation in what we're trying to do today, which is raise the remaining funds. We're just about $40,000 left to go uh, to hit our spring goals. So keeping the doors open, the lights on, and electricity flowing to our transmitter sites, our tower sites for radio, not to mention our podcast feeds, 
our video work, our live video, our edited and, and uploaded video, and so much more that we do here at the Catholic Media Apostolate of the Station of the Cross. 25 years. This apostolate is celebrating 25 years. 25 years ago, Mother Angelica challenged the laity. She got on her television network and she said, you lay people. You know, we need to do something about this. We need to pow- leverage the power of radio to evangelize the world, to re-evangelize the world. And she challenged the laity to go out and buy radio stations. Now, 25 years ago, there was maybe one, two Catholic radio stations. There was a legion of Protestant radio stations, but maybe only a handful of Catholic ones because the barrier to entry was high. It took people like Tom Monahan, the guy behind Domino's Pizza, to work with people like Al Cresta to form Ave Maria Radio, to form radio apostolates. It took people with capability, resources, know-how, engineering. Like, and everybody said, uh, what do I know about radio? I don't know anything about radio. I wouldn't know the first thing about how to operate radio. The only thing I know about radio is uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, Les Nessman and, and, the, and the crew. So Mother Angelica challenged the laity to, to put their money, their resources, their time, their talent, their treasure, where their heart is. And the laity responded to include the Wright family, Jim and Joanne, courageously, boldly. They started the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Re- Network 25 years ago. And amazing things have happened in that 25 years. Tw- a, a network of over 20 radio stations. But it goes well beyond that. We have affiliate partners that simulcast our program. Right now, we're in Michigan on this program. But our other programs are carried by even more affiliates. And then there's the podcasts. And then there's the the video feeds that we've now implemented. And people are watching from all over the world. And then there's the edited content that we repurpose to help plant even more seeds in the hearts of people all over planet Earth. For the good, the true, and the beautiful, for a voice of courage and boldness in an era of effeminacy, in an era of cowardliness, we are trying to be more bold and more courageous, celebrating 25 years. But we cannot do this without you. Without your support, it becomes impossible. 877-711-8500 is that phone number to call if you could make a pledge of support. Now, maybe you're not from the United States. Consider donating online. It's fast, it's easy, it's secure. All you got to do is just go to the station of the cross.com and then you can click that, click that uh, donation button at the top of the screen there and you will be able to donate quickly and securely. The donate now button is right at the top in that red bar, the station of the cross.com. But don't forget, you can also donate on our iCatholic radio mobile app, which by the way, if you haven't downloaded it, can I encourage you to download it? We are working on the back end to upgrade the mobile app. But can I just tell you, can I just share something with you? Because I've been working on the project or cooperating with my partners at the Station of the Cross on this project for over a year now. Do you have any idea how expensive it is to produce a quality mobile app? It's generally a six-figure project. Six figures. I want you to just ruminate on that for a second. In order to bring you a product that we are proud of and think that it will benefit you, it's like a six-figure deal. It's not inexpensive. It's not, it's not easy. It's very, very difficult and challenging because we want to b- roll out a product that's like that. So we're working on it on the back end. We have a product right now that does the trick, but we want to do it better because you deserve better. We want to bring you the tools, the resources, the content, the interactivity, the community built around uh, our content that allows you to share, that allows you to comment, that allows you to engage, that allows you to connect with like-minded Catholics and believers to share the true, the good, the beautiful, to have a a community of support there for you. We want to roll out premium content, additional content above and beyond what we do here on our radio work day in and day out, like the documentary film on the end times that we rolled out, like that poem that my daughter narrated earlier in the hour. That's also an example of premium content, plus sermons and lectures and speeches that we're we're collecting and we're asking others to give, and we're bringing it to you in our ICR premium tab at the bottom right corner. Not to mention 
There's the Saints and Seasons content that producer Jake, who uh, is a huge part of this show, every single morning, he is producing Saints and Seasons. Bringing you up to date, not just on the obvious, but it's the less obvious that I think is the most interesting. All of that, and can I just say so much more, but we cannot do it without your financial contribution to make it possible. 877 711 Coming up at the next hour, I have sermons for everyday living for you. Powerful sermons by courageous priests preaching the good, the true, and the beautiful in a bold and courageous way. It's also a part of what we do here. And we want to share some of those with you in the next hour. Karen, Sunderland, Massachusetts, on the team at $25. God bless you and God love you. Thank you. 877-711-8500 is that phone number. Would you call right now? We do need to hear from you. $2,300 in this hour. New goal next hour. Call now, 877-711-8500. 877-711-8500. Please call right now. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 